mobility. It's not a tree's strong point. A tree requires a means of dispersal if its seedlings are going to grow far enough away from the parent to be able to take hold and prosper, let alone start a new population. Over time, trees have evolved alongside dispersers, trading off the size, colour or palatability of their fruit so that their seeds at least can be mobilised. But in this northern New South Wales World Heritage listed rainforest, there is a problem with dispersal. This rainforest is home to an astonishing diversity of plant species, with as many as 120 different tree species assembled in a single hectare plot. This heritage and diversity has focused the research efforts of scientists from the New South Wales Herbarium at the Royal Botanic Gardens in Sydney, who are beginning to understand how critical dispersers are to the rainforest's diversity. Elocarpus grandis. This majestic rainforest tree is widespread from India all the way to here in northern New South Wales. There are a number of reasons why it's so successful. It's fast growing, it accepts a range of soil types, but more importantly, it is easily dispersed. These are all fruit, but fresh fruit are very attractive to birds. They are blue, they are fleshy, they contain a lot of nutrients and they are the perfect size for the largest of the dispersers in this forest, the wampu pigeon. The wampu consumes the flesh but passes the large seed untouched. The seed is packed with nutrient for the young seedling, giving it the best chance to germinate and grow wherever it's dropped by the wampu. As a consequence, Iliocarpus grandis is geographically widespread. In contrast, Edithia hardeniana is a very rare tree. It was only recently discovered by a scientist associated with the Botanic Gardens, Robert Cooman, in the Nightcap Ranges in northern New South Wales in 2000. Edithia hardeniana is in the family Proteaceae. It's represented in the fossil record much more broadly across Australia, indicating that Australia was once part of Gondwana and part of a large expanse of rainforest. Its discovery back in 2000 was a really exciting moment, broadly in terms of botany, but equally for myself. When we searched the thousands of hectares of the nightcap, in the end we found less than 200 plants in total and less than 100 of those as adults that could contribute to the breeding populations. This makes it one of the rarest and one of the most important plants in New South Wales. Idothea might be rare, but relatively speaking, it is a winner. Through long-term selective processes, it has developed a mechanism to survive long-term competition from other species. The way it does that is through a unique respirating mechanism where young shoot come up from the base of the parental individual even without the need of any disturbance. As soon as the parental stem dies off, another one takes over. And that way, the individual always persists on site. Here she comes. As well, genetic tests show that each of the trees is genetically diverse. This is important because for the first time, the herbarium could confirm that low numbers in a population don't always mean low genetic diversity. And genetic diversity is a sign of health, not concern. While Edithia hardeniana is geographically restricted, ecological and environmental studies undertaken by the herbarium has shown that there is plenty of suitable habitat. So why is Adothea rare? Well, the answer lies right here next to me. 
the fruit. Although these are packed with nutrients and produce beautiful, viable seedlings that can survive for a long time on the forest floor, they are relatively large. In fact, they are too large for any of the local dispersers. As a result, the distribution and the expansion of Idothea is limited by the lack of dispersal. All the research that we've done here at the National Environment of New South Wales on rainforest species is showing a consistent pattern between rarity and large fruits. But it's not all about size. Elecapus sedentarius has a fruit very similar in size to that of Elecapus grandis. However, it's not fleshy. As a result, dispersal birds are not interested in it. And dispersal occurs as an accident. Bush rats are interested in the seed, they collect a lot of fruit, cache them usually next to a tree, and then forget about them. As a result, every now and then, we get a few germinants like we have here. This, however, is not enough to maintain the normal dispersal and distribution of the species. As a consequence, we only have two populations of less than 100 individuals each for this Elecarpus. Indeed, years of observations of Eleocarpus sedentarius shows that the wampu and other bird species ignore its fruit. But there is fossil evidence that shows the cassowary was present in nightcap until relatively recently. And the cassowary is undiscerning. It eats fruit regardless of its palatability. Here we have a third species of Elocarpus, Elocarpus williamsianus. Again, a rare species. We only have 10 populations, and those populations are spread across a large area, about 10 or 20 kilometers between each of those populations. However, dispersal is still an issue. This species has fruit that are very similar to those of Elocarpus grandis, similar size, they are fleshy, they're attractive, but they contain non-viable seed. Elecapus williamsianus tends to prefer steep sites such as this one. This is because it has a competitive advantage. It can re-sprout from a basal shoot into multiple trunks. However, like strawberries and bamboos, each of these trunks is genetically identical. They are all clones. The problem then is that when a site such as this one has been highly disturbed, one single genetic individual remains. And unfortunately, for Elocarpus williamsianus to produce viable seed, it needs more than one genetic individual. As a consequence, each and every one of Elocarpus williamsianus sites are sterile. To overcome this, individuals from each population are being raised and grown together. Soon the potential for sexual reproduction will be re-established. But longer term, a disperser is required to carry new viable genetic material far enough away from its cloning parents when opportunities present themselves. I at, see least, what we're going at least here. the sea traps still standing. That's good. Yeah, we've got something here. There's a few endiandras there. In contrast to northern New South Wales rainforests, the Australian wet tropics in far north Queensland has a range of dispersers including tree kangaroos, many fruit doves and of course the cassowary. And research undertaken at the New South Wales herbarium shows that in the wet tropics, fruit size is not correlated with rarity, gene flow or species distribution. Over the past two to three hundred thousand years, ice ages and the associated increase in aridity have conspired to contract rainforests. And for World Heritage Rainforests in northern New South Wales, this has been accompanied by extinctions of fauna. Here at the Hebeum, we are in a unique position where we can combine our extensive botanical and environmental expertise with advanced DNA technologies. 
This enables us not only to learn about the distribution and assemblage of species, but it provides critical information to the conservation and management of our biodiversity. As we learn more about the importance of birds and animals in dispersing large fruited species, species such as this Floydia here that produce large hard fruit will probably need alternative management actions. This might include the reintroduction of plants into suitable habitat, or we might even consider the reintroduction of suitably large birds that can disperse it.